So now I just want to revise the terms monotonic increasing and monotonic decreasing because these terms will come up when we're asked to find the inverse of a function. So monotonic increasing means a portion of the curve which is always increasing. So you can see as part of this parabola, it's going to be this portion here, isn't it? So what I like to think about is when the, um, the curve, see how this is always increasing? So you can see the gradient is always positive. Whereas here, when it's decreasing, it's this portion when the gradient is always negative. So that's a good way to remember this. All right, let's see how this is used in the questions now. So, in question 18, we've been asked to sketch y equals to x squared. And remember, this is just our basic parabola that goes through 0, 0 as its vertex. So, find the domain that y equals to x squared is restricted to a monotonic increasing curve. So, it's just asking us, where is this part of the curve always increasing? And it's going to be this portion here, isn't it? Because the gradient is always positive. So the domain should be x is greater than 0. Now, can you see how I've only written x is greater than 0 and not x equals to 0? And that's because this point here of x equals to 0 is actually a stationary point. So it is neither increasing or decreasing. So that's why I don't write that in there. Okay, so remember stationary point, neither increasing or decreasing. So therefore the domain here is only x is greater and not equal to zero. So let's find the inverse of the function of y equals to x squared. So switching x and y, we have x equals to y squared. And now to get rid of that squared, we just need to square root both sides. And remember when we square root, we always have plus and minus. Now, because the question has specified that we only want this curve for when it's monotonic increasing, then we must only draw this portion of the inverse, okay? Which is your positive portion. Now, when we have the normal function up here, this is this curve for when x is greater than zero. And this portion here is when x is negative, when x is less than zero. Now, what it is, it's reflected in the y equals to x line. So this is flipped over like that. So this part of the curve, which you can see is drawn in a straight, in this filled in line, represents this portion here, whereas this dotted portion represents this dotted portion. So this portion of the curve is actually your positive square root x, whereas this portion down here is your negative square root x, which corresponds to that, okay? Now, so that's why I want you to remember, it's reflected in this line here. So therefore, we have y equals to the positive of square root x. But because it was defined for a specific domain, we must also define our inverse for a specific domain as well. So the inverse is a positive of square root x. And as you can see here, x must be greater than zero for that, right? Excellent. So just remember, with this, if you have monotonic increasing, we would want the positive version because it corresponds with that. Whereas if the question had asked for monotonic decreasing, that would correspond with a negative portion of the curve. Okay, so let's move on to a different question now. So in question 19, we want to sketch y equals to x squared minus 2x. So just a little revision of how we sketch this. We just want to factorize this to x, x minus 2. And this tells us our x-intercepts is going to be at 0 and 2. So these are our x-intercepts, and we just join that to a basic parabola form. So this is our basic sketch. Now let's move on to see what the domain 
when it's restricted to monotonic decreasing. So monotonic decreasing, remember, will be this portion where the gradient's always negative. And you can see that's going to be when x is less than 1, isn't it? Because we don't want to include that point because that was a stationary point. That's neither increasing or decreasing. So it's a monotonic decreasing for when x is less than 1. So now let's find the inverse of this function for when it's only monotonic decreasing. So first of all, we make the x and the y into x and both x's into y, like that. And now remember whenever we want to find the inverse of a quadratic function, what we need to do was, that's exactly right, completing the square. So to complete the square, we take half of this number, so that's going to be negative 1, and square it. So that's plus 1, which means that I need to add plus 1 to either side, which is what I've done here. Yeah, add plus 1 to either side. And now remember to get what's in the brackets of your square, you just take half of this number. So that would just be y minus 1 squared equals to x plus 1. Now this represents the entire curve, right? So to get rid of that squared, I square root both sides. So that becomes plus and minus, which still represents everything. Moving the one to the other side, have one plus or minus the square root of that. And now I want to think about what happens when it's monotonic decreasing. So monotonic decreasing is this portion, which when it's reflected in the y equals to x line, is going to be this portion of the yellow graph, isn't it? Because this is reflected to become that. So we only want to write the function for that portion. So can you see how that's just only going to be the negative portion of this curve? So we only want to write 1 minus the square root of x plus 1. So we only want this negative portion here to be written in. So the best way to do this is to write it for both plus and minus and then go back to the curve and think about whether it's monotonic increasing or decreasing and whether you need the positive or the negative portion of the curve. Okay, so this is our inverse of the function. So knowing that, let's find the domain of the inverse. So the domain of the inverse is going to be what the range of the original was going to be. So you can see the range of your original function was y has to be greater than negative 1. So therefore the domain of this is x is going to be greater than negative 1, which you can see here anyway. That's negative 1 there. Now let's find the range of the inverse. So the range of the inverse was originally what the domain was of the original function. Because you can see the domain there is going to be anything less than 1, isn't it? So therefore the range will be y is less than 1. And you can see that as well because this point here corresponds to 1. So the best way to draw these functions for monotonic increasing, monotonic decreasing is to find the function for when it's both and then work out whether it's plus or minus. And remember it's going to be reflected in this line so this portion corresponds to that and this portion corresponds to that portion there.